Hey everyone, welcome to the calculating solute potential part of the osmosis lab. At this point, you should have um, from your group data a graph that looks something like this. Um, based on the numbers that your group got, your line may be in different spots. Um, so in class, you combined your data with five other individuals to get data points for your percent change in mass in the uh, potato lab. Um, and then you drew a best fit line. And how you drew that best fit line is going to change your numbers slightly from your group mates um, and from other individual students or in other groups as well. But you are gonna need this that is on page 128 in your notebooks um, for your calculations. So the calculations themselves are gonna go on page 129. And um, what we're gonna be calculating is something that is called solute potential. Um, so what we're looking at is we're looking at a pressure value. So remember that when water enters into a plant cell, it's going to have a cell wall that reinforces that plant cell to prevent it from bursting. And so as water is rushing into the cell due to a concentration difference, um, at some point, your plasma membrane is going to, um, or the cell will expand, and then um, uh, begin to exert pressure on your um, cell wall. And, and in this case, since it's a plant, it's going to be made of cellulose. So as water is coming into the cell, um, the cell will swell and begins to put pressure on that cell wall, that, that cellulose wall. At some point, when um, enough water is coming in, the cell wall will begin to push back on the water, and that's what we're looking for. We're looking at the amount of pressure. Once the cell fills up entirely, uh, then the cell wall itself will begin to push back on the water um, that has filled in the cell to prevent the cell from bursting, and we call that um, we call we, we, we call that a what we call that water potential. Now, in order to be able to do these calculations, there is some information that we're going to need. Information that is um, provided by for you, um, with the exception of one variable. So. Our solute potential, um, in order to calculate it, we need to know the formula. And the formulas can be found on your formula sheet. Um, we're going to be looking at water potential. And remember, water potential is just a pressure. It's the, the amount of pressure that the wall is pushing back on the water once the cell has filled up. So here is our formula here for water potential. And this is the Greek letter psi, P-S-I. Um, and so our water potential is equal to a, something that is known as the pressure potential plus the solute potential. Now, there is a little uh, information, bit of information that they give you down here at the bottom, which is that the water potential will be equal to the solute potential of the solution in an open container because the pressure potential of the solution in an open container is equal to zero. And since our cells qualify or considered um, open potentials, what that means is, I'm going to rewrite this formula, that the water potential is going to be equal to our pressure potential plus the solute potential, but the pressure potential itself is equal to zero. And so if you have zero plus anything, you, you're basically going to ignore that value. So that means that our water potential is directly equal to our solute potential. Again, because this cell is considered an open container, and so that pressure potential is zero. You don't have to memorize that. That is on your formula sheet. They tell you right here that the pressure potential of the open container is equal to zero, so you can disregard the uh, pressure potential in your equation. So now if you're asked to calculate the water potential, what you're essentially doing is as calculating that solute potential. So how do we calculate the solute potential? What you're going to do is you're going to move down a little bit, and here is your equation. Here is your formula. So your solute potential is going to be equal to 
a negative number, you do have to make this number negative, something that is called an ionization constant, multiplied by a concentration, a pressure constant, and our temperature. So this is the calculation for solute potential. And for our cells, the solute potential is equal to the water potential, which is the pressure that is being exerted by that cell wall. So you can use your formula sheet. Um, the formula sheet has most of the variables that you need for this equation. So in this case, I is your ionization, ionization constant they will give you this number. And most of the labs that College Board has done use sucrose as the solution, and so they will tell you what it is. Now, sucrose is one, it's an ionization constant if one, because it does not ionize in water. Any other ionization constant, they will tell you what it is. So at this point, we're gonna do some plug and chug for our equation for our, um, to calculate that solute potential. So. My solute potential is going to equal to negative 1. That 1 was given to me on my formula sheet because we're using sucrose, and they tell me what that ionization constant is. Times C. This is the tricky part. This is the hard part of this equation. What you have to remember is that C represents the molar concentration of whatever it is you're testing at equilibrium or at an isotonic solution. Okay, so that means that this is going to be where your potato, squash, whatever it is you're using, um, does not get gain and does not lose weight. So we have no change in weight. I'm sorry, in mass. So I had you guys on your graph draw a best fit line. So these values represent where water was entering the cell. These values represent where water was leaving the cell. But what we want is the value at which the, the cell neither gained nor lost weight. So you would look at your best fit line and find out where it crosses the axis. And that number, whatever it is, that number is going to be your molar concentration, your, uh, your, uh, your isotonic solution. So again, we tested at 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and 1 molar, but that's not what we're looking for. What we're looking for was where the potato did not gain nor lose weight, um, and that is the isotonic concentration. So our best fit line was drawn to find out what that molar concentration is. And whatever number that is, whatever value you have there, is the value you are going to enter into the equation over here. So that value, whatever it is at the isotonic concentration, is going to go right there. And it's going to be different for every student because of how you drew your best fit line. All right, R is going to represent a pressure constant, and this is 0 0.0831 liters times bar, uh, liter bars uh, divided by moles in Kelvin, and then your temperature in Kelvin. And so you'll need to make sure that you get the temperature reading for um, your class period um, to find out what that temperature is gonna be, but it does need to be in Kelvin. So I'm giving you the temperature in Celsius. What you've gotta do is add 273 to, turn, to make it Kelvin. At this point, you should have all the values in your equation here, and you can calculate for your solute potential, but remember that this is going to be a negative value. These numbers, the 1, the 0 .0831, um, and most times your temperature, will be given to you in a word problem or in a grid-in. Um, the thing that you have to remember, so here are all your, your constants. The only thing that you have to remember is C is that molar concentration, but it's the molar concentration when it's isotonic. In other words, when there's no change in the mass of whatever it is you're testing for. And you would find that by using a best fit line and seeing where that best fit line crosses
the zero axis. Okay, thanks for watching.